lot of times our bodies are telling us when these men are cheating on us. And I just remembered how many times my body literally was like screaming at me, like bah, 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 through um, getting sick, through other things. I'm gonna show you some examples. So I was actually originally gonna talk to y'all about how my ex, uh, you know, shows some receipts about him literally going on Craigslist to solicit schmegs. So at the time I lived in Taos, New Mexico, this man was putting Craigslist ads in Santa Fe, Albuquerque, Colorado Springs, um, Roswell, like all over the state of New Mexico, hundreds of miles away. But what I realized, this date right here, June 24th, I, I just thought, well, uh, what was I doing on June 24th? I wonder if that's an important date. So I'm gonna show you in a second, but just so you can see this lovely ad that he put, it's so hard to get a tug and a rub or a quickie, no sight, no money, person to person. I didn't realize how important that date was. I was like, okay, he, you know, I, I made a video yesterday talking about a lot of times these men will cheat on you while you're on vacation or like whatever. They cheat whenever they want, right? Usually when they start being jerks or something changes, it's because they started cheating. And especially if they start accusing you of cheating, that is when they're actually cheating, right? So, but the reason why the, the subject of this video just changed is because I went on to the, the book of faces to see where was I on June 24th, 2014. And this picture is me and my, I was on family vacation and my, one of my close friends, Annie, the one who ended up coming and saving me, the one who came down from Alaska to literally drive me out of the state of New Mexico to get me away from this man. This woman is, I owe my life to this woman. But we were on vacation. This was the beginning of my relationship with this dude. And you know, she already was like a little concerned how much I was on my phone because he was texting me all the time. Blah, 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 blah. Nah, this is when his back problems started, the alleged back problems that were actually completely fabricated. I made a video on that. I'll try to remember to link it when I'm done. Uh, do not believe these men's injuries. Half the time they're just full of crap. But this was like, um, this is my friend Annie and the guy who like basically saved us because this day, my last day of vacation, I had this strange illness come up. I couldn't stop throwing up. I, I, I thought it was maybe food poisoning or something. I couldn't stop throwing up. This is the day I was flying back to see my ex, you know, to go back to New Mexico to start, you know, go back to work and everything. And the reason why that's important is because that's the second time that I got violently ill when I was on my way back to see this dangerous man that I didn't realize was dangerous. The first time it happened was when I actually had been like, before I officially started dating him and I'd just been kind of like falling for him slowly. You know, I think I've told you all before. He basically didn't tell me he had a girlfriend, started pursuing me won me over and then was like, oh, by the way, I have a girlfriend. So then I was like, oh my God, wait, I, I don't want to be the other woman. So I basically, long story short, made like um, an ultimatum. And I was like, dude, I do not want to be someone's side dish. I don't believe in that. Like it makes me feel awful in terms of like, I didn't understand how narcissists work and that everything he'd said to me at this point was a lie. And so I just felt so guilty that I, I, I set an ultimatum thinking that like part of me that really wanted this relationship because I was already addicted to him wanted him to leave her and be with me, right? And this other part of me, the wise, the intuitive part of me was like, this dude sucks. Like, and so I went, I went away. I took a vacation. I went back, I went uh, back to, to LA to see my friends. I performed at the Bright Citizens Brigade, like killed on stage with this show I did. I, you know, just got back in my creative energy, right? I um, went to Joshua Tree and climbed and was like feeling strong again. I met some great women and bonded with women because I need women to center me from my nut self. And I was feeling really good. And then at the top of a climb, when I, and I didn't have cell phone service, so I couldn't even be in contact with this dude. I knew that like he probably was never gonna leave this girl and I needed this separation, no contact, for a few weeks to get him out of my system, right? But of course there was contact, except for when I was in Joshua Tree. So at the top of a climb, I get this text. And, uh, and he, and this is the end of my trip. I have cell phone service finally, and it goes, I left her. Now we can be together. And I remember initially I was like, Ugh. and then I was like, well, I mean, this is what I wanted. You know, my, my, my gut reaction was like, 
almost wanted to vomit. But then I was like, well, Melanie, you know, you made, you made your bed. Now you got to lie in it. You're the one who, you know, you hooked up with a guy with a girlfriend. This is what you get. Blah, 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 blah. And my friend Liz, I actually called her from the top. And I was like, ah, he left her. I guess we have to date. She was like, that doesn't mean you have to date. Just because he left her doesn't mean you have to date Melanie. You don't have to be with him just because he left her. You can still not be with him since it seemed, you know, she tried to talk some sense into me, but I was like, no, you know, this is the cross I bear. I broke up a relationship, even though it wasn't even, the dude was living with his girlfriend and his girlfriend's mother and using her car because he's a hobo schedule. And so I swear to God, right after that text, I was sick. I was sick for the next 24 hours because I was like, on, and on my way back to New Mexico, this long drive, it's like, I don't even know, 17 hours or something. I was barfing. I was so sick. And I was like, huh, I wonder if these are related. So that's twice, twice my body was trying to tell me before going back to this man that A, he's a cheater. B, he's like, he's dangerous. And my body and my, my, my gut has always communicated with me. My gut and my throat. These are like the, the canaries in the coal mine, baby. When these are acting up, there's something usually wrong. And so, of course, I talked myself into dating this man. When I got back to New Mexico, he literally had a hammock and a banjo and a backpack. And I met him in a coffee shop and I was like, oh, okay, that's right, I guess. I'm like, where are you going to sleep? And he's like, I thought I'd sleep at your place. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm literally dating a man with a homeless man. And I made all kinds of rules, blah, blah, blah. There's, this story is so big. But I wanted to draw attention to a couple of other times my body was trying to tell me, uh, 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 right? Towards the end of that relationship, my, I told you these men will make you sick. They literally make you sick. I mean, I did the whole video about how my face, my eyes, everything, I looked so old because they're vampires, they're parasites. They literally suck the life out of you, right? But my throat mysteriously started hurting all of a sudden. I couldn't swallow. And conveniently, I could not give, mm -mm, right? I did, I, mm, sorry. I ended up in the ER. I couldn't drink. I couldn't swallow uh, even liquid. I couldn't drink water. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die of dehydration. And I have a wilderness first responder. I'm like trained in this kind of stuff. And I was like, oh my God, like I need, I need, uh, I need an IV. So I went to the ER. They're like, yeah, you're super dehydrated. They scanned me i did that i love my sense of humor because even in this scenario where i'm dating a terrifying man and i'm in over my head and i don't and i hate myself i still know how to have fun and laugh because it's literally what has anchored me to anything it's my it's a survival mechanism for me it always has been they gave me all these medicines to take i had to see a throat specialist in los alamos you know the place where oppenheimer crap happened and they basically were like, uh, we may need to take out your tonsil. Because I had this huge white thing growing here from months of not talking and silencing myself and not living in my truth, which is that this man's a psychopath and he's going to take my life if I don't get out of here. And I, when, I was, when I went to this doctor every time, I was like, look at these funny photos. Again, I have always kept my sense of humor throughout everything. And that is what I love about myself most, I swear to God. In the end, when I told that, I, I told that specialist, I was like, Okay, it's not that I'm against you taking out my tonsils, but I have a feeling that it's related to stress. I'm in like a pretty bad relationship. Um, do you think they may be connected? And thank God this man was like, yeah, I mean, unless you're sure, you know, then let, we don't, I don't just want to take them out to take them out. So I did not take them out. As soon as I left that man, it's all gone, resolved. You know what I mean? Like my throat didn't hurt anymore. But here's the other thing. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, look at you falling asleep he's trying so hard to stay awake after he graped me for the first time i didn't see him for a few days the first time i saw him after he graped me i broke out in hives hives all i never do that i never break out in hives my body was literally like no you know and i knew that i was leaving this man i had a date i knew annie was coming to get me out this was the end of the relationship and i was just trying to hang on thinking it couldn't possibly get any worse which it did of course it escalated every single day until the day i left which again is one of the reasons why this is so dangerous y'all and why so many women leave because they know they may get unalive trying to leave but my body at every turn at every turn was trying to tell me, this is dangerous, please get out. And it was sick, it was on high alert, it was constantly talking to me. Please don't ignore your body. It's telling you something. 